go. How did you <laughs> um, go? Sorry? <laughs> tango is the best. It takes tango. Two to tango is amazing. That's a perfect demonstration. Tango, presence, claim, yeah. penetration, invitation, surrender, expression are all embodied in that beautiful dance of which Suzanne is, you know, an amazing exponent of, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I absolutely adore what you said about surrender because um, as, as I was telling you both earlier, a lot of my clients come to me to start psychedelic brands. And I think a lot of them will like this question. Um, I'm very curious to know your answer to this because I remember seeing a post very recently actually from you, Satyan, about how you spoke to a divine maternal presence of pure love energy from an ayahuasca journey. And surrender was ultimately the biggest lesson I ever learned in personal ayahuasca journeys. So I'm very curious, you know, what role does psychedelic healing play in, 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 in healing for the wounded masculine and the wounded feminine? Mm. Mm, very good. It's a great question. You know, you know, we started our work in psychedelics before it became famous and, and, and now is in a renaissance, which we're very happy to see. You know, we started this work over 35 years ago with our mentors and, you know, been taking people into the jungles of Peru and the Amazon for, for decades now and all around the world and different ceremonies and such. And one of the things we've recognized is, is that um, plant medicines, teacher plants, the way I look at them from a word tradition is these are teachers. These are not just biochemicals that alter consciousness. These we refer to them and revere them as actual embodiments, teachers that have something profound to share with us and have a profound benevolence when we meet them, when we open up and we meet them with full awareness and positive intention, the intention to grow as an individual. So I believe that psychedelics are not for everyone. They're for those who feel a calling to go to realms of being beyond that they've ever done. It's especially good for leaders who've been there and done that, and for leaders who have been there, done that, and think that they, they know a lot, and they intuit they can use a humbling. <laughs> because Mother Ayahuasca will humble you and bring you back into a, a, a place of deeper humility with, with the nature of who you are, where your strengths are, and also will reveal where your weaknesses are, where your shadows are, the places that are not addressed, the places that are unhealed. And I believe that the masculine within us, you know, men of today, when we look at the, the hundreds, if not thousands of years of distortion of masculine energy, it's, it's a accelerated way to get in touch with the truth of our masculine, as well as embrace the cosmic feminine, which allows us to embrace the human feminine, our mothers, our daughters, and our sisters. Mm, it's beautiful. And, you know, the feminine in all of us grows through transmission with other feminine energies. And particularly ayahuasca, I have found to be a feminine energy. And it, it for myself, helped me to relax the clenches that I thought were relaxed in me. So you may think you're relaxed until you meet a teacher plant um, that helps you to see that there's more to do. And it, like Satyan says, it kind of knocks you off of your um, pedestal in, in, in a sense. And we all need to, to not put ourselves on a pedestal but realize that there is always more work to do, that there is always more personal growth that is possible. Because when you get to a point where you think that I've got it all together and I know it all, suddenly you get knocked off of your, um, you just get knocked off. You don't want that. You want to be on top of your game. And so, you know, on the other side of this, the beauty of, these teacher plants are the capacity to see and experience what um, you don't even know is possible in yourself. 
and the depth of connection that is possible with those that you may share this with as well, particularly with your partner, the depth of connection that you may have thought you touched is, is just a tip of the iceberg to where you could possibly go. And that we personally have experienced ourselves. Mm. Yeah, what I'm what I'm really getting a sense of too in, in just your your answers are you know, I the both the masculine and feminine at their best are both uh very present. Um and it's almost as if, you know, the the feminine's way of showing up with presence is is by radiating. Um so so tuning in and tapping into that radiant quality, which is a whole paradigm shift, a whole perspective shift when you're tuning out of the go-getter, work hard, a lot of masculine energy running in a female and kind of, you know, gently gliding into just being, being love, as, as you two were talking about earlier. And I wanted to ask, um, you know, how has both of your relationships with presence evolved? relationship with presence clarify that for us yeah sure i guess how how over over the years i mean decades you know when i think of people in their 20s you know presence is something where you know people in their 20s think they're invincible right and and as we as we as we age as we grow up we know that we're not invincible and so i guess what i'm curious about is i guess the 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 time differences the generational differences mm -hmm as you've, you know, been together and, and how you relate with presence in your lives. If that makes sense. Yeah. So when, you know, when we started together in our twenties, we were really run by passion. Twenties and thirties, we were run by passion, you know, in our mid thirties and forties, we were run by purpose. And now we're run by God. Mm. Oh, I felt that. <laughs> that encompasses passion and purpose. So it encompasses all of it is where we're at right now, bringing all of that together. And regarding presence, ultimately, we won't have physical presence. This whole story of even us how much love we have, the exuberance we have, that'll come to a pass. And the sobriety of death is what enlivens love. The sobriety of death is what makes this moment and love and connection and sweetness and the simplicity of just being gentle with each other and holding each other's hearts more valuable than all the riches and attainments that can possibly have in the material world. And that's how it's evolved for us. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. The material starts being a lot less interesting than the experiential. <laughs> Experiences start to become much more interesting to collect or to gather or to just be fully immersed in um, as, as two people grow. Um, so, so beautiful. So, I want to ask like a like a, a more I guess kind of tangible question because when I think about the masculine and feminine at work in the workplace or just co-creating in a ceremony for example you know when is a good time to hold space for emotion and be present to to the the changing feelings and when is it important for walls to be up for you know, more of a directive energy of things. Hmm. Well, when it's one isn't working, try the other. Exactly. <laughs> 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 it's artistry, you know, it's artistry. What do we need here? Okay, we need a little bit of this here, that over here. What could bring it out even more? What could, what do we need more energy in the space? So is energy needed? Well, that is where the feminine comes into, into, the, into place. 
energy is uh, the feminine is all about energy in all different kinds of ways in in smells touch taste sound music all of that is music needed in ceremony say because in in ceremony often it's well we have experienced this it'd be very quiet and and there's a depth to the to the to the quiet and the depth of the quiet depth is the, the the masculine in all of us so the silence and just being aware of your your consciousness where are you in the moment where is your mind it, are, is there even a mind is there even you who are you and and all of those those deep questions is is a moment of masculine masculine presence and maybe in that suddenly just to save your life the music starts and it's like, oh, okay, where was I now? I feel the divine, but the divine is felt in both the masculine and the feminine. You know, it's, it's what is needed in the moment, energy or depth. Yes. Mm. Boundarylessness, boundaryless, exuberance, energy, life force. When you're on a dance floor in ecstatic bliss celebration, and then there's times to have boundaries, containers, right? We can't, this is the container, the masculine, the water is the feminine. The water would be all over the floor if it wasn't the container here. The straw that you're drinking from is the masculine that's drawing the feminine within you, right? So you need both. You cannot have one without the other. They're complementary energetics. Now, here's the challenge. If we're in a monastery and it's just energy, 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 you won't have the feeling or the cultivation of depth. If you're just, um, you know, if you're, if you're in a dance club and it's, uh, let me put it this way. The best speakers in the world, the ones who really move us are ones who have this sing song between energy and depth, silence, stillness, exuberance. But if everyone's always exuberant, it's too much. If they're just still and quiet and in depth, they're boring. So there's, they're lifeless. So it's about enjoying the sing song, playing the sing song, feeling for it, and, and not being rigid in any one of those roles. And ultimately, it's about becoming an artist. If you look at a piano keyboard, it's wide. There's lighter notes, deeper notes. The more notes we can cultivate, the more music we can play. Oh, I love that. That's a good soundbite. <laughs> That's a good quote right there. Um, wow, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I just feel like my brain is so activated and my heart is so open with this conversation. Um, I wanted to give you both a chance to share any events or offerings coming up or, or currently available for people listening. So are there any that you two can bring our attention to? Oh, thank you for asking. Well, you know, we have different offerings and events. Mostly we work with um, leaders in the world. And you can find out more about that work by going to warriorsage.com. And that's where there's all types of resources, videos, uh, teachings. Um, we have, when you become part of our community there by signing up on the email list, we've got like, I think, 12 or 15 audio tape programs, vintage trainings that are all for free that ex go from money to sexuality, to tantra, to sacred medicine work. And so you can dive into all of our life experiences and that's all for free. And when you're on the list, once in a while, we, right now, most of our work is private by invitation only or by application. But if there's any business leaders or leaders who are there to make a big impact in the world, they wish to live these principles and wish to have personal tutelage in it. We're, we don't pull punches, you know, we're very direct. We're, we work with those who are not just debutantes or those who are just splashing the surface of growth. We're only interested in serving those that are here to um, be the fullest expression of freedom and love to make the biggest impact and biggest reach on the planet. If that's you and that resonates, reach out to us and we'll be happy to chat with you and let you know what's coming up. Yeah, what a deep calling. I, I definitely feel as though, you know, I have an intuitive sense for people who are here to really, you know, who are not just here for a phase <laughs> and know that life is not a dress rehearsal. 
Um, so I just, I absolutely love that you, you intensify that calling. Um, is there anything else that uh, was on our minds or in our bodies you wanted to share before wrapping up? Hmm. I feel that, it, do you have something that's coming up for you? It'll arise as you speak, I'm sure. We're in this pandemic time in the world. There's a lot of pressures, even beyond our own selves. Even if our lives are happy ourselves, there's a lot of pressures on the earth plane right now. I truly believe now that the intensity of this time, the pressure cooker, the fact that Mother Nature or whatever the circumstances are, has given us a time out to go inside of our rooms is an opportunity for deep contemplation and really recognizing how much of my life have I been living outside of the alignment of what my truth is. And this is a sacred, potent time to come back and say, how can I live my life in alignment with who I am and make that the most valuable and precious thing in life and make that the only thing in life worthy of going for and i promise you if we take you if we utilize this potent time of world pressure then the gift that will bloom from this pressure will be something profound a gem for the world to see and experience and that gem is us mm -hmm. yeah and you know i would say in in alignment with that so what is it what is it that you're here for really take this time really go inside and be willing once and for all to show up to radiate to stand firm and be the be be the light be the depth that you need to be once and for all, because we do not know what tomorrow is going to bring, but we do have now. And as you asked before about presence, we have presence right now. This is the present moment. And are we giving and being all that we can be? Here is that invitation. I urge you to take it and move with it and give all that you can now right now <laughs> right now oh i love it wow you two just you two just really are, are living works of art living masterpieces i feel um and we're always works in progress too which is another beautiful <laughs> understanding um i have to say you two in my view at least have truly surpassed many barriers in misunderstanding the masculine and feminine and this is deeply inspiring actually um i feel uh many people probably listening are probably stunned that a union like this could even exist um because i know that a dynamic like this has really only been in my dreams for so long you know i i you know there was there were there were not enough potent models like this to really counteract the, the problems that the masculine and feminine often bump into with each other. Um, but, you know, alas, I hear dreams realized and both of you sharing and opening up about the call from the universe that you both have heard and really responded to. Um, and so thank you. Thank you to everyone tuning in and you both. Um, Stachin and Suzanne are truly seasoned guides in the healing arts and they live and lead with their hearts open. So I sincerely encourage everyone to check out Warrior Sage. The links will be in the description. And a reminder here to also share this video with someone who could really benefit from hearing this, your community, your audience, and please feel free to leave feedback. <laughs> Mia, thank you so much for your openness and your receptivity and your joyful inquiry it's been very beautiful to be with you today mm. the pleasure is all mine thank you thank you both so much <laughs> love you both <laughs> right back at you bye, bye.